Thanks for joining me today at InvestorIdeas.com Clean Tech and Climate Change Podcast, looking at today's problems and solutions for the future. I'm your host, Don Van Zandt, founder of InvestorIdeas.com, and hoping to share our way of making a difference in climate change. Welcome to today's podcast. I'm talking to Mr. Stephen Kukucha, clean tech and venture capital expert that was recently appointed to the board of directors of Dinosert Inc., trading on the TSX, DYA, the OTCQX, DYFSF, and on the Frankfurt as DMJ. Stephen is an investor, lawyer, and corporate advisor who brings over 20 years of knowledge, experience, and achievements in the hydrogen and clean technology industry to his role as director of Dinosert. Stephen, welcome to today's podcast, and congratulations for joining the Dinosert team. So for investors and listeners that aren't really familiar with the story and your story, can you talk about your background and how this really fits into the mission of Dinosert? Uh, great, and for sure. Uh, good morning to you and everyone. By, by training, I'm a lawyer, so I've got that background, and I did spend some government, some time in government as a senior advisor uh, at the federal level to uh, several cabinet ministers. Um, uh, that's where I got my first uh, introduction to clean tech, uh, both with the Ministry of Transport and Environment. And through that, I transitioned, and I spent seven and a, and a half years, seven plus years at Ballard Power Systems, running their Global External Affairs Group. And spent a lot of time in the United States and in Asia and Europe. Uh, regu- doing regulatory work, working with governments, uh, helping lead some of the partnerships, and also do emerging market business development in Asia. So I, I really got a sense of the hydrogen and fuel cell business at that time as as the market was emerging and Ballard was really a, a global name. And it still is, quite frankly. Subsequent to that, I became an entrepreneur. Uh, when the company Ballard split up and the automotive business went back to Ford and Daimler, I, I t- took it as an opportunity to leave the company and become an entrepreneur and formed a few, a couple of advisory groups and a renewable power company, had some exits, had a, had a, a very good stretch there, uh, leading into um, this next opportunity, which is re-engaging back with the hydrogen and fuel cell sector. And I'm very excited about this opportunity. Uh, I've got lots of experience in the sector, including uh, roles as vice chair of Fuel Cells Canada at the time, chair of the Transportation Committee, uh, Canadian Transportation Fuel Cell Alliance, sat on the steering team of the California Fuel Cell Partnership, which is a leading partnership for commercialization of vehicles um, in the world. Uh, At that time, also sat on the U.S. DOE Advisory Panel and uh, was a director of both the National Hydrogen Association and U.S. Fuel Cells Council. So with that background, I think I've got some value to add to Dinosaur and look forward to helping grow what, what is already an established business. One of the things I, I, you know, I think everybody notices with Dinosaur is they have a great management team, and we've had Jean Pierre and Jim Payne on on the <clears> show. And one of the things I notice personally because is how passionate they are as well, and it, I think it always comes through in all of their interviews. So, can you talk about your impression of the team and uh, what about them that made you want to join it as well? Sure, I, I got to know JP Colin um, as we were advocating. Um, with the federal government for for financing mechanisms, including flow through share for in the last budget cycle, and he and I uh, quickly got along and, and shared a passion for the clean tech sector. And the more I learned about Dinosaur, it's a really an interesting place in the clean tech ecosystem. It's it's at the commercialization stage and making a difference now. Um, there's a real market opportunity for its product. It has interesting technology. It's not just an R&D company. It's, it's obviously doing R&D, but it's got an interesting opportunity to, to clearly penetrate the market and, and make a difference. The challenge and opportunity for the company is to obviously increase its sales. And there's a billion engines worldwide and in lots of markets, including logistics, trucking, transportation, small, medium, and large-sized diesel engines. And while we transition into a net zero economy and a cleaner economy, um, those diesel engines will be around for a while. So the question becomes, how do we make them cleaner? How do we take a project, a product like uh, the diversified line of hydrogen products that Dinosaur has, uh, use it in the aftermarket industry to help transition some of these sectors in mining, long-haul transport, rail, marine, even generators? Uh, and, that, and that opportunity is globally. North America, South America, you name it, Europe, Africa, um, I think – the penetration of this product is just starting, and, and once it gets real market traction, Dinosert uh, 
can only grow its, its leadership position. Well, I would think, too, I mean, we, we all see personally right now the, the logistics issues. We're all seeing the amount of transports on the road as people went online and literally bought everything imaginable during this pandemic. And it's sort of a perfect storm of that. At the same time, there's so much push for a uh, clean tech future from, from governments globally. You would think that this really is an opportunity of a lifetime for them when you look at those two things coming together. You know, absolutely. There, there's there's a fi- finally an inflection point, I think, where industry and government are aligned and, and most importantly, the marketplace and consumers are aligned to really adopt products that are going to make the world a better place. And Canada, uh, both Dinosaur and other companies have uh, have leadership positions in this. So it's really a question of, of going out and taking that Canadian technology and getting broader market traction for it. There's near-term sale opportunities, obviously, domestically, but the larger markets obviously will be internationally and, and finding large fleets for adoptions. But with all the support for and this is recent support uh, both in Canada and globally for hydrogen, uh, specifically in the transportation sector, there are going to be opportunities for this company to grow. And um, I think there's we've seen lots of hockey stick predictions in, in the past about the sector, and obviously not going to make market predictions on where dinosaur is going, but I think there is there is opportunity to really finally penetrate the market in a global 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 way. So with your experience in both clean tech and then venture capital, what trends do you think, like what are you paying attention to? What do you think people should be paying attention to in terms of trends? Um, again, market adoption, uh, continued government support, the Canadian technology that, that, that can be put into the market to help solve some of those things. I think the more large companies that uh, start to adopt uh, this technology to, to green their fleets, uh, will be important. You've seen corporate leadership around the world from large companies, from everyone from Microsoft to Amazon to, to even Walmart and others. So I think getting technology penetrated into those large corporates with continued government support um, will be important and also continuing to evolve the technology uh, and finding um, uh, new improvements and new iterations and, and finding different marketplaces for, for the tech as we move forward. Narrowing and specifically into a hydrogen and fuel cell, again, you've worked with Ballard in the beginning of this interview. You really talked about your extensive background and all of the roles you've played. So looking forward for this specific part of clean tech, what do you see or some of the future trends for that and what are you most excited about and how do you see this being rolled out on a larger scale? Well, as the world moves to net zero by 2050, I, I again, looking at looking at how that's going to play out. Um, the IEA just released a, a report recently that talked about the opportunities here, and hydrogen will have a long-term role in that, um, in reducing CO2 and, and changing the way we um, we do things. And it's not a one-shot solution. There's there's no silver bullet here. There's lots of, uh, lots. I like to use it, it's more of a shotgun, where there's lots of different types of solutions that will will help us meet that 2050 target. But what hydrogen can do, uh, both in transportation and other sectors, is uh, is help integrate um, some of the different technologies that are out there and work with existing technologies like diesel in, in various market segments to create solutions. So if you look at where we started 10 or 20, hydrogen has been around for a long time. If you look at where we started 10 or 20 years ago, with the Ballards and the hydrogenics of, um, of the world and where we're at today with the loops of the world, we're now, I think, at an inflection point where you're seeing alignment between consumers, government, um, markets, and, and tech. Um, and that, that is usually a, a nice, perfect storm where you can get uh, commercial traction for your products at a global scale. And specifically looking at Canada, I think a lot of investors don't realize, I know when I went to the hydrogen fuel cell conferences a few times here in Vancouver, I was really surprised like what Canada's role is in, in the future of hydrogen and fuel cells. And so specifically talking about Canada and the opportunities and the sector here, um, why do you think Dinosaur, uh, you know, is something people should take a look at? Why, why do you think they fit into that agenda? 
Yeah, Dinosaur, Dinosaur is, has obviously got some interest in technology and continues to do R&D, and, but it's at the, as, because it's at the commercial stage and you're seeing near-term sales, you're starting to see adoption and you're starting to see the opportunity to make a real change in specific markets. So it's a company with a, with a decent market cap and $160 million valuation. It's got a global reach both for its products and its, uh, and its applications into different markets. And it's a commercial-ready product, ready to go now, not in the future. Uh, it's got a solid line of patents. Um, as the carpet, carbon market itself unfolds, we'll also see that, I think, impact the adoption of, of certain technologies as, as companies are looking to take advantage of, of, of carbon credits. And, and if our products, as our products can sort of provide those um, and in a measured, uh, validated, and verified way, uh, that'll be a, a further incentive to adopt in, in, in various sectors, mining, transport, long-haul transport, rail, marine generators. So again, Dinosaur's at a really interesting place right now as Canada is, is poised to lead uh, in clean tech uh, market market growth and clean tech uh, adoption in various markets globally. Just to close off, it, it looks like, again, looking at your background, your passion, your um, background in both clean tech and, and in capital, that you, you're a perfect fit for the team. It's like you're you know part of the dream team <laughs> moving forward. So just from your personal perspective and what you've done and what you know about the industry, what are you most excited about for Dinosaur? What, what, what is part of your vision for the future moving forward? Well, well, first off, I appreciate the compliment and hope that I can, uh, it can be a valued part of the team going forward and uh, help grow the company because I believe it's, it's poised for, for that growth. And again, the most, the most, the biggest opportunity for me that I see is really that chance to, penetrate commercial markets, grow, and share Canadian technology on a global scale in a way that, that makes a, a measured, real, and near-term difference. So that's um, one of the things that, uh, as a board member, I'll be helping focus the company on and penetrating both uh, governments and large companies that are ready to adopt this technology. So I think that uh, the technology market for clean tech and, and climate solutions is really poised to take off because there's alignment between government and, and, and industry and consumers, and, and the tech is ready. And Donna Cert's there with uh, commercial-ready technology to solve problems. So I look forward to being part of that team and contributing. That's it for today. Do something great for this beautiful planet each and every day. To hear more clean tech podcasts, visit the clean tech and climate change page on Investor Ideas. You can find it on our top template. Also, Investor Ideas has a lineup of other podcasts and themes, including the AII, the Crypto Corner, our cannabis podcast called Cannabis News and Stocks on the Move, rated one of the top investor podcasts in the sector, Play by Play, a podcast looking at sports and esports news, and Exploring Mining. To listen to any of our podcasts, visit our podcast page on Investor Ideas at InvestorIdeas.com forward slash audio. And a reminder, you can hear our podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, and most audio platforms available to you. If you like any of our podcasts, we would appreciate you recommending them or reviewing them on your audio platform. And to help you follow and track clean tech and renewable energy stocks, Investor Ideas has created a directory of publicly traded stocks in the sector. You can find that by going to our homepage, looking on the sidebar and looking at renewable energy and environmental themes, and you'll find our stock directories there. Investor Ideas does remind all of investors to read our disclaimers and disclosures on our site. You can find them at investorideas.com forward slash about disclaimer dot ASP. It is important to read these. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investment involves risk and a possible loss of investment. Thank you again and have a great day. For disclosure purposes, Dinosaur is a paid monthly featured clean tech stock on InvestorIdeas.com. You can learn more about that at our disclaimer disclosure pages found easily on our bottom template.